welcome to Gates TV with me, Charlotte Richardson. I'm delighted to finally get to sit down with our new sign-in, striker Norman Wabo, who has made his debut for the club, albeit at the start of the month, which feels like a lifetime ago. And what a debut he made, scoring a brace in the Gates FA Trophy victory. Norman, it feels like it's been forever since that debut. How are you? Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Um, I've been all right. I've been all right. Um, just been trying to keep fit, uh, not to lose any momentum, especially since our last game was so long ago. Like it feels like forever. But um, yeah, I've just been, I've just been, you know, trying to keep fit, doing my morning jogs, and uh, yeah, doing what I can. Really, and it's an unusual start to your gay career. It must be said. Mm -hmm. One, you know, one introductory game, and then into this lockdown. But how how have you found um, the club? Obviously, you've met your teammates, you know the management quite well. How are you settling in, even in these bizarre circumstances? No, nah, everyone's been everyone's been so welcoming um, since the first day I got there. Obviously, I knew um, Quayley from before and uh, the Gaffers or Jay Saunders. Um, so yeah, since even before I came in, like they they were very adamant to bring me in. Um, and yeah, so since I've been there after the first game as well, done well in the first game. I was expecting to play the second game against, I think it was East Farrakh, yeah. which would have been on a Tuesday. Um, so I was looking forward to that, especially after scoring two goals. But I've got, I've got to wait a bit longer for the next game. <laughs> well, fingers crossed it will be soon. And you mentioned, yeah. Jane, there being adamant about getting you over. I remember when the um, when the WhatsApp came, we can announce the striker. Like It was like Christmas had come early. Yeah. He made it really clear that mm. you were a player that he really liked and... And, and tell us a bit about how the move came about and what exactly, you know, sealed the deal on this occasion to bring you down yeah. to the club. Um, so before before this happened, I'd been at a few different places, um, just trying out, um, especially because I was at Dartford last season. So um, after that, I tried a few different places, but uh, Coily called me and Jay Saunders called me as well, the gaffer, and they, they said, Norman, come in, uh, show what you've got and I'm sure you can reach whatever level you'd like to aspire to, but um they were very like I've known Jay for a while now he's tried to bring me at Maston obviously when I was at South End and yeah he's just been from day one he's just been trying to get me rallying um get me going as well <laughs> get me going so that I can actually perform to the level that I know I can perform at yeah. and yeah so it's just it's just been nice refreshing to have that kind of support around me yeah, because that's the thing sometimes for, for football fans. We all wish we were good enough to be able to play football. But actually, there are parts of the game where it can be quite ruthless and it's not mm -hmm. all that it's cracked up to be, particularly if you're a youngster trying to break into the game. So I suppose mm -hmm. for you, the opportunity to work with people that you trust and that have a great deal of faith in you, that's quite a nice opportunity mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. That's, that's the main thing about football is um, you need to feel that security. You need to feel that comfort and... Uh, yeah, comfort really, just so that your confidence is oozing, you can perform on the pitch. As you see on my first game as well, like <laughs> the first, the two goals, like I, I felt like I'd been playing for a while. I felt like I'd been playing at this team for, for ages because everyone was so welcome and everyone was so, so nice. And uh, yeah, they really played to my strengths as well. So, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, um, let's take you back to that FA Trophy game because obviously supporters back then were able to travel, but some people didn't have an opportunity to see the goals. Talk us through your day, mm. how you felt you slotted in and, and the two goals themselves that contributed to a really positive result. Um, first 10 minutes, I felt rusty because <laughs> <laughs> it was my first game in so long. So yeah, I felt a bit rusty, but as I grew into the game, um, uh, I started to get started to get a feel of the game. Um, my first goal was, um, I think we had a corner and it came back out. Then uh, Noel crossed it back in. And I was down at the back post, um, just a little purchase goal. And the second goal, um, I had, so a pass got passed into me from, I think it was Freddie Monker. Um, got on a half turn, literally from halfway line. I just ran, um, a space opened up. Um, I died in the space and I, I slotted it past the keeper. But yeah, that's that's what I'm capable of doing when I'm playing like to my strengths, playing at my highest ability. And I'm just hoping I get many more goals, literally. Yeah, definitely. I think speaking to Jay this season, obviously it's been difficult circumstances for managers across the whole pyramid, but the gate had been playing some really nice football and it was just having, you know, that poacher in the box and to finish movements and stuff like that. So you obviously slotted in really, really well 
into the starting eleven, and, and fingers crossed, hopefully we might get a bit of football soon. How mm. would you describe your yourself as a player and the style yeah. of game that you like to play that you feel gets you at your best? Um, as a player, I would say I'm a I'm a player that likes to run in behind. Um, I like coming short as well, but my main strengths are running in behind mainly because of my pace, uh, my directness. Um, I'm very good with the ball, very good finisher. And um, the way the team plays as well, the style of play for the team, um, it, it suits me, suits me. I can I can see myself getting quite a few goals just in the terms of the way the team wants to get forward. We play some good football, but as you said, they were just missing that, that final piece up top to score goals and... Yeah, if they keep if they keep feeding me, I'll keep scoring. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's a note to your teammates there. Um, <laughs> right, right back. You got scouted at the age of, of 15 to go mm-hmm. um, to South End. What was that experience like developing at a football league club? Um, for me personally, I started football, uh, I started taking football quite seriously quite late. So mm-hmm. um at school, like year seven, that's when I actually started to really get into football, started to realise how, how good I could be. Um, and I got scouted at Essex County match um, by Southend. And yeah, growing up in, in that kind of environment, it, it teaches you about professionalism in football. Like you need to take every moment seriously. Um, and it, it just teaches you like, uh, it, it, I can't really how do I explain it? It's uh, as well, isn't it? In, in, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially being young as well, growing up in that environment, you learn a lot um, from the old, from the senior pros. They give you good advice, and um, yeah, it's just it's uh, it's it's an environment which which really builds you builds you up characteristic wise, and uh, yeah, that's. That's it. That was the learning round. And before then, do you have yeah. siblings? Is is football a family trait, or is it just kind of a natural gift that you discovered from the playground? Um, football's uh, my my dad got me into football very young, so I've got siblings. Uh, my sister's a radio presenter, oh, nice. and yeah, my little brother he, he plays basketball. He's 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 very. Tall. I tried to get him into football, but he, he was no good. <laughs> <laughs> I was into <waiting> my. <laughs> But yeah, he, he he plays basketball. So yeah, um, we're all we're all kind of sporty, but we're all into different things. Um, but for me, it was always football from young. Always football, and you made your football league debut at Southend as well, which is absolutely no mean feat at all. That must be a moment yeah. that you look back on with a great deal of pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a very proud moment for me um, making my debut, especially being eighteen and making my debut. Um, everything was everything came so quick like didn't really expect it but at that moment I thought I was doing really well and it was uh it was married so yeah it, it was it was a good experience uh, a fond memory to look back on and you've learned quite a lot of your trade in senior men's football actually in the county Edsley and you mentioned Dartford with Jamie Coyle in Kent in particular there is such a thriving and competitive non-league environment and culture how helpful has that been for you as you know, as a young player to, to earn that experience, I'm sure you probably learn a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a young player, I'd, I'd, I'd advise all young players to to really go out and um, experience men's football because it teaches you a lot. Um, you're playing for three points. Uh, you know, the fans are there as well. Um, it's just it's just a great atmosphere in general, and you it builds you up as a footballer from young. Like you, you understand the game, you learn the game in different ways. And for me, it was it was always about getting that experience from young so that I can build up on it and um, learn new things, uh, uh, be adaptable to new systems. So yeah, that for me, senior football has been, it's been very important to me, um, especially playing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think as well for, for football, fans sometimes you watch the Premier League and you might even go whatever team you watch on a Saturday think that success comes really easily and actually sometimes mm-hmm. um making mistakes and, and learning from hiccups and stuff like that that's really important so being able to mm-hmm. like get those run of games I suppose and get as many appearances under your belt is something like that, that must again hold you in very good stead yeah 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 definitely and when managers look back on it as well they say okay look, he's played this amount of games he's experienced uh, he knows different things about the game. So that's all, that's all important for a young player. Definitely. So Jay and Jamie managed to get you down to Hearts Park after 
all that time, one time, <laughs> the tees were two goals. I and know, I know. You mentioned it before, I, I guess you you like probably a lot of the squad on the WhatsApp groups and stuff like that, you must just be desperate to play. We don't know what's going on. I think there's some kind mm. of Zoom meeting on, on Tuesday, but um, mm. I suppose, yeah, just give us a, a glimpse. You all must be desperate to play football again, really. Uh, um, it's been, I've never, since the first lockdown, that was, that was the real... Um, experience I got of not playing football for a long time because I'm so used to playing football every single every other day so this has been so frustrating especially since I came back played one game then we've got another uh, it's just been it's just been long but everyone's itching to play again and I get and are you all like kind of keeping fit and checking in on one another on the whatsapp group and stuff like that mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, everyone's been, everyone's literally been on the WhatsApp group every day, um, talking about how everyone, someone's running 5K, someone's doing this. Uh, so yes, this, um, everyone's, everyone's been close knit. So yeah, we're just keeping on top of each other and can't wait to get playing. Yeah, good. Well, we offered um, supporters the chance to send in some questions, so I will whittle through some of them. First, the um, one that came in from a Margate supporter. What can Margate fans expect to see from you when you put on the shirt at Hartstown Park? Um, they can expect me to work hard. Um, um, I'll keep running non-stop and uh, hopefully the, work, the hard work pays off with goals. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a willing worker, really. Good. That will go down very well, I suspect. And then another question. <laughs> what were your first impressions of your teammates when you met them? <laughs> <laughs> They're an interesting bunch. <laughs> There's quite a few interesting individuals, but um, no, nah, no, nah, they were they were they were welcoming. Like since the first I came in, like literally everyone was, everyone was, uh, everyone was made me feel at home. So I can't I can't say any bad things about them. Did you know anyone before? Had you crossed paths with anyone in your career that plays? Um, I crossed paths with uh, no, nah, no one really. I think I played against um, uh, uh, Reese um, when he was at uh, when he was at is it Wedding or Bromley? Maystone, 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 oh, okay. Maystone. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I played against Reese when he was at Maystone. Yeah, no. so I think he's the only he's the only one that I've crossed paths with really. Fair enough. And then another support was asked: um, Have you had a chance to train with the boys yet? And if so, what's it like being being coached by Jay? Jamie and, and um, Craig and, and the likes, because I'm not sure how lockdown impacted on that. I think you were pretty yeah. straight in, weren't you? Literally, I had one training session and then I played the match and that's it. <laughs> well, so what that, in that training session work? Because you've got those... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, I had one training session and then we had the match. But um, other than that, no, we haven't really... We have, and that training session was late as well since the match was so soon. Yeah. But um, no, nah, no, nah, yeah, everyone's been, everyone's been good. Training session was well. And what's your go-to meal on a match day is another question that was asked. My go-to meal. Um, in the morning, I have Weetabix. And I'd probably have a little snack as well, probably like a, a chocolate bar just to, just to get me, get me going, give me some energy, but yeah. Okay, and then we've had a lot of talk. We've done a series recently called Unlocking the Gate and music has come up a lot. And then another question that's come in is, is there a song that you, like what kind of music basically do you listen to on a match day to get you in that headspace? Um, I listen to a lot of R&B, um, a lot of soul music. Uh, so that's, that's literally what I listen to on, on a match day, probably some... Uh, who would I listen to on a match day? Probably some, some Usher or Trey songs, something like that, just to just to give me some energy. Oh, good, I like the sound of that. And then, uh, who do you support? Who is your team? I support Chelsea. Oh, but Chelsea boys. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be. Um, they've got first today, just... haven't they? As as we're recording on Sunday morning. Chelsea, yeah, I've been a Chelsea fan. And for a long time, a big game against Spurs, uh, I think we'll win that. Oh, okay. So I think, um, I'm trying to think if there's any Spurs 
and in the in the Margate team, I'm not entirely sure. I know that Jay and Jamie both support Arsenal, so there's a lot of London clubs amongst them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I, they they got onto me when I told them I support Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got and um, we got a question in from one of the boys at the Margate Academy, and um, which I thought was quite an interesting one because again we touched on it earlier. People like to talk about success, and when you're a striker, there's so much pressure on you mm-hmm. to score goals and deliver. It's very rare to hear footballers talk about sometimes when when they are struggling or when they might not be feel, feeling so confident. And um, this young player said, how have you dealt with setbacks or periods where, you know, maybe it's, it's not clicking? Is there anything you do to kind of reset yourself and, and, and help? Um, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. So um, with, with setbacks, uh, I tend to pray a lot. Um, um, literally try, try and do different things, see where I've gone wrong, to sort of reflect on what happened see what I could have done better but yeah in terms of setbacks I'm I'm very spiritual so I, I just pray tend to go to church um, and uh, work harder as well literally like train harder so that them setbacks don't happen again. I think that's some really really good advice there and certainly for any young players listening in um, nothing is perfect and it's part of life isn't it for mm-hmm, football mm-hmm. or otherwise. Yeah yeah yeah. And then another really good question that I think you'll be able to help with. Um, can you give any tips on how to stay positive during lockdown? Tips on how to stay positive. Um, literally keep yourself busy. Um, so that's what I've been trying to do. Like I've been trying to keep myself busy, um, reading books, going out for jogs, just uh, getting out of my house in general, just so that I'm not stuck. I don't feel like I'm stuck in a box. Um, but right. yeah, like. Yeah, get some fresh air, literally, get some fresh air, um, listen to music. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of things you could do to stay positive. Yeah, agreed. And uh, you had a question coming from a teammate that you might have seen already. Now, I'm reading uh, between the lines on this actually <laughs> initiation song. But Liam Friend, do you know all the words to Amy Winehouse, Valerie, or just three of the lyrics? Now, was this something to do with an initiation song? Like, fill us in. <laughs> Oh my, the initiation song. I, I I didn't even remember what the song was called. I was <laughs> I was literally just singing, then I stopped and I, I couldn't remember any of the words. But um <laughs> now, now, now I do know all the words, Liam. I know all the words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the final question, which is one that I've posed to everyone we've had on Gate TV recently. You might be aware that we're um, sponsored by the Libertines and our kits have been really, really mm-hmm. popular. And there are four new designs this season, which again, fingers crossed, you might hopefully be uh, wearing on your home debut, debut in the shirt. Mm-hmm. Which of the four is your favourite and the one you are looking forward to wearing the most? I'm looking forward to wearing the blue one. The blue one looks, it looks unbelievable. <laughs> um, I like all the colour design around it, the splash paint. Yeah, it looks nice. I really like it. They're quite unusual, aren't they? Have you ever really worn a kit? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I've, I've never seen, like, I've never seen this like that. That's why I was so, like, it caught me by surprise. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the blue one looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be looking the part Norman yeah. and hopefully things will be oh just a little bit normal again and and supporters will be able to, to watch you yeah, yeah. Goals for the gate in the lovely kit before Christmas if we're lucky but thank mm. you so much for coming on to gate tv for giving up some of your time and the opportunity for supporters to get to know you a little bit better no thank you for having me thank you so much And thank you for tuning into this interview on Gate TV. If you haven't already, do make sure that you subscribe so you get all the alerts of when our content is coming out. You can leave comments below, of course. It's always good to hear from you. And until next time, do keep safe and take good care.